Hi, my name is Venus O'Hara and welcome to another video from my unmade bed. Today I'm going to talk about something that's very personal to me and something that I've wanted to talk about for a long time but I didn't really know how. So I'm going to talk about sex and religion. I received a few questions about this and I received one this morning, so I thought I've got to make a video today, today, so here it is. I've seen some of your YouTube videos and I'm interested to know, were you always so sexually open or were there a series of significant events that liberated you sexually? You mentioned Catholic education. Surely this would breed a shameful attitude to sex. Well, thank you very much for this question. It's a wonderful question. I've actually made some notes here about some significant events. Well, yes, I was raised Catholic um, in the UK. So um, as the UK isn't a Catholic country, I was able to, I was in a cocoon of Catholicism at school and at home in my family, etc. But then I also knew friends who weren't at Catholic schools and, and the, so I had a kind of, I had two influences really. So, um, so first of all, um, I, when I was about 10 or 11, I was I actually wanted to become a nun, believe it or not. And why did I want to become a nun? I, at the time I was reading a lot of books about saints, female saints in particular. And I always felt like I was um, a strong, um, kind of rebellious or outspoken, intelligent girl and clever girl. I wasn't the kind of just ever going to be quiet and just sit sit pretty. I was always, I don't know, quite vocal, I guess. And um, I was interested in female saints stories because there was a lot of devote, uh, dedication um, and faith, perseverance and self-belief and just fighting for something that might be against the odds. And that's not usual in in what we're told about women. So yeah, I was I was really interested in these stories and uh, stories they were real real life stories of um, of saints. And I wanted to become a nun one day. Um, and I I went to church all the time. And um, and then around the age of uh, I think twelve, I was reading the Bible every day, and I came across a passage in the Bible that rubbed me up the wrong way. <laughs> so let me actually find, I've actually found it. Um, so, let me find it, bear with me. So it's a bit weird sending myself on email <laughs> things from the Bible. So if there's, I don't even know how you're supposed to reference these uh, Bible passages anymore. So it's been such a long time since I was, since I was at church. So roles in worship, 1 Corinthians 11. You are, to imitate me just as I Im imitate Christ. Anyway, this um, particular passage, I'll leave a link to it, but um, it talked about a man ought not to cover his head since he is the image and glory of God, but woman is the glory of man. For man did not come from woman, but woman from man. Neither was man created for woman, but woman for man. <gasps> For this reason, a woman ought to have a sign of authority on her head because of the angel. So I, I read this when I was, uh, uh, and that was the day I actually closed the Bible. And it wasn't really about sex. It was more about, I, f I felt like I, a feminist, even though I probably didn't even know the word feminist. I probably hadn't even heard it by that point. But um, yeah, I never felt that I... I was less because I, for being female at school, I was always, I was got good grades in my family. I was always encouraged. And I never felt that I was just gonna be, I don't know, for the glory of man, I don't know. So, so I completely rejected the Bible firstly because I found it, I just found the whole thing quite misogy misogynistic really. So it's just like, no, this is not, this is definitely not me. Um, so, and then obviously the, the hormones kicked in and then high school, there was kind of rebellion because um, I had to, I was obliged to study religion. So I absolutely hated it. And, but at the same time, I wanted to get a good grade. So you know, had to learn all this stuff about the Catholic church and Christianity in general and, um, and things about contraception and abortion in particular. And that just really, I always felt that a woman should choose, 
you know, what happens to her body. Uh, or, or I was definitely not going to be anti-contraception. That seemed like madness to me, especially in a country that I was seeing lots of teenage pregnancies around me. So it just seemed incredibly naive to ignore so, something that's so important. And then interestingly, at the Protestant school down the road, they're, they're having sex education with um, putting condoms on cucumbers, whereas we were having, some, in some cases, sex education with nuns who obviously know nothing about sex. And it was always, I remember the, the phrase, a man loves his wife so much he wants to place his penis inside her vagina. You know, I always, I always thought that sex was about procreation and I always imagined that if a family, you know, had five kids, it meant they'd have had sex five times. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I did never thought that sex was um, for pleasure ever. So then as I got older and you get interested in boys and also in female magazines, that's where I got my real sex education from. And I'm really grateful to anyone who was involved in those, the magazines such as Just 17 or more in the UK in, in, in the 90s. It was just for me um, where I got all, all my information from. And, and, and for me it was, uh, so I never, I, I guess, uh, let me just look back at my list. Um, so I've done the Bible, tick, saints and nuns, tick, yeah, I wanted to be a UK, yeah, so, um, so I was able to compare this Irish and English kind of influence, I guess, this Catholic with liberal, and I definitely felt more, more liberal, um, and then when I started having sex, I never... It was honestly, I think it was one of the greatest pleasures I'd ever known. Um, there is the A spot, which is something that's very close to the cervix. And that for me was my sweet spot. It was almost like instant orgasm. And that for me was, it wasn't just about having orgasms, but I felt like I was connecting with myself somehow, like we would with meditation. I just felt at one with my, oops, the battery run out. Yeah, so I felt this, connection with within myself when, when um, during penetration and it was I think one of the greatest joys I'd ever felt in my life mm. so it was like having let's say the best ever chocolate cake you've ever had and then someone saying it's a sin to have that and I'm just saying no no it isn't it's the best thing I've ever tasted so I guess for me, uh, I never felt that sex was a sin. And also because the way I was having sex, um, although I was, um, I, I think I was adventurous within my relationships, um, I was never, even though I've had a lot of sex, I've never considered myself to be promiscuous or to take sex for granted. I've always um, considered it to be something really special, especially intimacy, that doesn't mean I've only had sex with love. I think I've had intimate connections without romantic love as well, but it's been a way for me to enjoy my own body and connect with myself and share something really special. Um, so I guess, um, yeah, I never felt, I never felt that I was doing something sinful. And also because I enjoyed it so much, I loved talking about it for me. Um, every time I, told a friend about a sexual encounter, I was reliving it. Um, and then when people around me saw my openness, observed my openness where sex was concerned and they started talking to me. So it became, I always was a confidant or, or in, um, with my friends where sex was concerned. Um, and I, I always connected with other, other people who were sexually um, open as well and I loved talking and sharing tips and uh, yeah so it was always something that, that intrigued me a lot. Uh, I read a lot of books about sex, I, I read a lot of magazines so it wasn't just about the act in itself, I was interested in sexuality as well. So um, mm -mm -mm. and also yeah I do think that, that, that intimacy has been, even though I if you look at my relationships over the years, and to some people it might seem disastrous, but for me, um, everything I've lived has been really beautiful and and I've shared incredible, incredible intimate moments. And that's what life is about at the end of the day. So just a collection of moments and I have so many that I that I have enjoyed and, and shared. And, um, but then obviously over the years, I, I, I discovered um, 
masturbation more like maybe the opposite to a lot of people I just got it quite quite late on and then I realized that I didn't need just another partner to feel that connection within myself I was able to reach it alone and sometimes that might have been preferable over having sex with someone you might might not be into as much or something so so and, and that for me uh, was liberating on many levels uh, I've made a lot of videos about how how I had my first orgasm my first sex toy and how for me it was emotionally liberating I mean I didn't mean I didn't need to have I didn't need to rely on someone in a relationship anymore I was more having unions or relationships with people um out of I don't know it's like the cherry on the cake it wasn't necessary but it was an extra wow factor in my life as opposed to being the necessary element I don't know if that makes any sense so and that's what's inspired me to do to do what I do is to share the joy of orgasm with the world and also I've had, I've had some incredible partners over the years who've helped me to enjoy myself my own body my own vulva vagina through oral sex through being relaxed through compliments through making me feel really good about myself so so I think that's because uh, I just think about women who you know aren't able to relax through oral sex because they're thinking oh, what do I look like or what do I smell like or they just can't relax so, so I just think it's a real pity to have something so beautiful, such as intimacy, orgasm, arousal, connecting with a partner on many levels, deep levels and romantic levels, spiritual levels. Um, to have, having a, a relationship without connecting on those levels, I think, can be a pity. I think it's like missing out. I think you can miss out on a lot. Um, so... So so now um, I, I had a massive rejection of religion in my my earlier life, but um, as I've spoken about in in many videos, I've had a spiritual awakening over the last two years. I would say um, so. I still, when someone says the word God, I have a real problem with that. I prefer to say the universe, um, and I find spirituality to be very different from religion. I think religion, my experience of religion, was about being restricted, being told that you you were born a sinner and you're never going to be quite good enough, whereas spirituality is about um, abundance and growth, expansion, feel, and, and freedom to expand into whatever you or whoever you are. So, and and that in in how that affects sexuality, I think I through a sexual encounter on it, you can. You can almost raise your vibration. I, I don't know. I, I think um, now I've, I find sex to be a much more spiritual, in, much more exper spiritual experience. Um, I, I find it's a way to enjoy my body, and I do believe that um, that the clitoris is is a gift, really, from God or the universe, whatever you want to call it. But um, but it's, it's, it's an organ that's, that's sole, that's sole function is to provide pleasure. I think in my earlier sexual life, I was interested in fetishism and BDSM because it went beyond the physical. There's, there's a lot of psychology involved. I think about the, the film Secretary, which is one of my favorite films ever, or the book Venus in Furs. And I think about almost the mental games there, that kind of thing really, really, really turned me on years ago and the memory of it still does now. Um, so I think something, those things turned me on because it meant that you had a deeper connection beyond the physical, physical element of sex. Whereas now that I've become spiritual, I've gone through this ego death, so I don't think I need to play with roles or dom sub uh, anymore. Um, I, I don't feel I need to dominate anymore like I used to. Um, I don't need that validation. I just think that now um, being a goddess is not about being a superior woman. It's just about celebrating my femininity and the and the, the body that I've been given by the universe. All these sensations. I mean, sometimes when I'm enjoying sex, I just think, wow, I just feel really present in my body. And I think this feels so good it's like a gift it is a gift and I, I believe that my mission is to 
help people relax about it and and enjoy their gift as gifts as well because you can I, I think the the potential in a relationship when there is a a deep sexual connection an intimate connection is absolutely incredible um so rather than being repressed about sex i mean someone made like made a comment on last week i, I made a um, a review about a toy which was a vibrating tongue and someone s mentioned that their lack of ability to enjoy blowjobs was affecting their marriage and i thought oh my god this is so sad so i think there's a lot of liberating to do with this subject but my advice to anyone who's having trouble um getting over the this the guilt of that religion <laughs> gives to you is just to i mean if it's a female i think it would be interesting to to research about the clitoris and how incredibly pff, amazing it is and how, how its sole function is to provide pleasure and i think it might have eight thousand nerve endings or something so i think you have to be grateful for this for this uh for this gift and an orgasm as well is a, a great way to feel present in your body and it has other other benefits such as stress release and um help you it can help you with depression it can help you sleep it can it's good for menstrual cramps i mean i, I would have an orgasm before going to the to the pharmacy any day i mean i don't actually have um i don't actually have a first aid kit at home i have lots of sex toys so yeah, I think um, I think it's interesting to to research benefits of orgasm and functions of of the clitoris, and and just to, um, understand that I think a relationship can have a lot more a lot more complicity when there is good sex and when you're open with yourself. Anyway, I hope uh, this video is helpful for some people. And despite all this, I do understand that a lot of people get comfort through religion. But for others, it's something different entirely. I think the important thing is to be true to yourself and, um, and only have things in your life that make you feel good. Yeah, and be authentic. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and see you next time.